size section. First, you need goggles, an apron, pants, clothes, shoes, and gloves. And if you have long hair, make sure you put it up. And these are the tools we are going to be using. This is anterior, and this is posterior. If there is some fat, make sure you remove it with only scissors. This is the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle. And how you know that this is the left, it's because the left ventricle has more thicker walls than the right one does. First, you start by making an incision in the middle right here. Start by making an incision down the right atrium to the base of the ventricle. Now we're exposing the internal structures of the right side. This area is the renal hilus. Next, you remove the renal capsule. Next, you cut the frontal section through the kidney. This is the renal cortex. That's the renal medulla, and then the middle part is the renal pelvis. This is the renal cortex, then the middle is the renal pelvis, and the edge is the renal medulla. This is the renal artery, and then that's the renal vein. In this area, there is superficial fat and fatty conductive tissue. Right, this is a cow eye, and from here, you can identify many parts of the, the eye. You've got the sclera, or this outside white portion here. You can identify the fat and muscle that surrounds the eye itself. You can see the cornea of the eye here. And then deep in the eye is the pupil. It looks like a dark oval. An incision in the cornea with this dull. This is the dullest. Scissors. Scissors. Hey. Oh. Gross. like a flat tire. <laughs> what I am doing now is I am cutting open the cornea so we can gain access to the iris and retina of the eye. And all, so all this clear liquid that was released from the eye as I cut it open is known as aqueous humor. It is made of mostly water and keeps the shape of the cornea. Don't say something horrible then. Oh. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, okay. So from here, I'm going to use the scissors to make an incision through the sclera in the middle of the eye. So the back of the eye is filled with a clear jelly that's known as the uh, vitreous humor. It's a mixture of protein and water, it's, and it's clear so light can pass through it. Right. Wait, what? Now through the, the jelly-like substance, we are going to remove the lens of the eye. It resembles somewhat of a marble. This is a view of the back of the eye where you can see the optic nerve in the center is very protruding. Uh, you can see the separate fibers that make up the optic nerve. Uh, uh. So, in the back of the eye, the eye is covered with this shiny blue green stuff. This is the tapium. It reflects uh, light from the back of the eye. Deep brain, and I'm going to identify the different areas of the brain. We have the anterior, the lateral, the media, the other side, which is also lateral, and we have the posterior or the caudal end of the sheep's brain. So here on the inferior portion 
of the sheep's brain, I'm going to identify the pons, the medulla, the pituitary gland, and the cerebellum, which is located down here. Continuing on the inferior portion of the sheep's brain, we have the olfactory bulbs, the longitudinal uh, fissure, which is right here in between. We have the optic nerves, which are here and here, the optic chassium, the optic track, which is down right here, and then here we have the oculomoto nerves. So from behind, we are going to identify the cerebellum, which is here, and the fourth ventricle, which is located inside. Go. Okay. So inside, we're looking at the inferior callus, the superior callus, and another good look at the fourth ventricle, which is here. Now to the more middle portion of the inferior view, we have the optic nerves again, the uncus, which is located here, the uh, mammillary body, the hippomoral gurus, and the rhinal fissure, which is located on both sides here and here. The superior portion of the brain, we can identify the frontal lobe, the acinate scullus, the uh, pseudo villain scullus, and the super civilian scullus, which are located here and here. Now we move on to the temporal lobe, which is located here, the lateral scullus, and the occipital lobe. Go. Now I will perform a mid-sagittal cut on the sheep's brain. Now after a mid-sagittal cut, we get a better look at the inside of the sheep's brain. We can identify the, the cingulate gyrus, the lateral ventricle, which is located here, the fornix, which is the outside of the lateral ventricle, and the septum pedilium, which is here, the third ventricle, located here, the cerebral aqueduct, down here, and the tegmenum, which is located here. Taking a look at the fetal pig, I can identify the external nostrils, the hard palate, the soft palate on the inside, the opening of the nasal phalanx here, the uh, glottis, the palate on the tongue, and deep on the inside, you can see the hyoid bone. I'm going to make a mid-sagittal cut down the body of the fetal pig. Here we have the internals of the fetal pig. This is, we have the heart, the lungs, the, we have the liver, and when you lift the liver, you can identify the stomach, the spleen, this, the diaphragm, which is down here, this little like lump, then we have the coiled colon and the uh, duodenum, which is here. Correction, this lump is the pancreas, not whatever I said it was earlier. Now moving on to the urinary portion of the fetal pig. Here, deep inside, we have the kidneys, one on each side, 
one, two, and then continuing to look deep inside the beetle pig, we have the uh, inferior vena cava, which is here, the aorta, here, pause it, the male reproductive system. We have a cut umbilical cord, the penis, which is located inside here, the penis. Now we look at the testes, which are within the scrotum or the external pouch which we have already cut open.